Well, good evening. We welcome you to this uh, service on Monday, Thursday. And we are excited to be um, sharing in a joint service with First Baptist Church and First Christian Church. And we are here to observe uh, this day in which we commemorate the Last Supper of Jesus. Um, before we begin, I want to make sure that as we celebrate the Last Supper, do you all have communion cups somewhere in front of you in the pew? Okay. Well, as we uh, gather for worship um, this evening, one of the ways in which um, Reverend Lisa and I were thinking about communion was about the fact that for the last year or so, we have almost had the idea of communion taken from us in a way. As we have sought to be loving community members, we have observed the pandemic regulations and restrictions, and we have done so out of a sense of love and commitment to community. But we are also slowly coming back. And so as we got to thinking about this service in communion, we got to thinking about, well, what is communion? You know, when you haven't had something in the way you normally have it for a while, sometimes when you get back to it, it has a deeper or newer meaning or fresher meaning. And so as we gather tonight, that is what we're reflecting on. And one of the interesting things about that is prior to this service, Steve Klink, um, our tech arts person, was up in one of the classrooms upstairs and noticed the, the relief that you all saw in the video and that is up here. And it's this beautiful relief that nobody knows where it came from. <laughs> and it was probably up in a classroom collecting dust, and so we have dusted it off and put it up here. And in a way, it's kind of emblematic of, emblematic of what we're doing as we kind of dust off communion <laughs> in our lives, as we re-encounter this thing that we have not had in the normal way this year. And so we invite you into this, into this service and into this time of reflection and of connection. And whether you're joining us here in, in person or at home, we hope that this will be a service in which you can take time during this holy week to focus on what it is God is calling you to in life. And tonight in particular, we invite you to reflect on this call to commune with one another and with God. So we welcome you into this service. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Will you now join me in our call to worship? The Lord has heard my voice and my supplications. He has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Gentle or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one bread, one body.
Hear these words now from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Communion is an act to remember what Jesus Christ did for me. The bread broken represents his body and wine, his blood shed to forgive my sin. It's a quiet time of reflection and thanks for what God has given us through his Son. It's a celebration of our personal relationship with Jesus that nobody can take from us. This is a moment we take to both remember the sacrifice Christ and God made for each of us, and also the moment we as a family of believers come together at the table to break bread in a solemn moment. Everyone's been to a church dinner, or lunch, or potluck, but this is the time that we set aside specifically to go through an experience that, that ties us to several thousands of years of church family and with those that haven't yet arrived. It is the opportunity to become one with my Lord and Savior. I can share with Him, seek guidance, and it's important to me to thank him for my many blessings. Just as yeast makes bread rise, communion helps the Holy Spirit to rise within me. Communion is a celebration of Christ and a remembrance of what he did for us. It is a chance to thank him, to commune with fellow believers, and to take a wellness check of our lives as Christians. It is open to all who believe in Jesus Christ and the new life and hope his victory over death on the cross brings. When we take communion, we are symbolically expressing our desire to be in Jesus and knowing that he is in us when we accept and acknowledge that Jesus is in fact in us. We become holy through him only, not of our own actions or thoughts. Communion is connecting, connecting to God, connecting to community, connecting to earth. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Well, about 10 years ago, when my husband and I were newlyweds, we cashed in all those wedding gift cards, and we took back a few things that were a little smaller so that I could get the thing that I would really, really wanted in our house. I'm talking about my red KitchenAid stand mixer. Now, that's not something I grew up knowing that I needed in my life, but about five years prior, I baked a bunch of cakes with a friend's and discovered the awesomeness that is the KitchenAid mixer. I was enamored with its capacity to make baking so easy. So at long last, we brought home that beautiful red KitchenAid mixer to our tiny apartment <laughs> kitchen. I mean, our washer and dryer were right next to the stove. It was very tiny. So I put it on the little rack that we had for extra storage, and I adored it. I mean, every time we sat down to eat, I made sure I was stationed so that it was in my line of vision, and I would just smile. Now, of course, I had this fancy new toy, I mean tool, in my kitchen, and so I needed to find some things to, to make so that I could use it. And before too long, bread was at the very top of my list. I'd been baking for well over a decade at that point, but I'd never tried bread before. It always seemed intimidating. But that handy-dandy little recipe book that came with my mixer had several bread recipes, and they looked really simple. So I decided that summer, I was going to teach myself how to bake bread. So it didn't take very many attempts before I started picking up on what all the, the recipes seemed to talk about that I didn't really understand before, like how the dough would cling to the hook or how you had to proof the yeast. I didn't understand before I tried about making sure that you added the flour just until it got the right texture. And then I learned about adding a little bit wa of water if it ever got too floury. For me, particularly trying is what I have to do to really understand something. And maybe, maybe you're like that too. So over the years, I've, I've tried various types of loaf breads. I've made French bread. I've made cinnamon rolls. I've experimented with white flour and wheat flour and white wheat flour, whatever that is exactly. And I've made... I can't even tell you how many times I've made pizza dough. But this is what I've learned out of this decade of baking bread. There's absolutely nothing more wonderful than walking into your house when there's some fresh bread in the oven. Do you know what I'm talking about? The aroma just fills the whole space, which somehow mysteriously infuses it instantaneously with a warmth and a coziness, inviting us to come on in and have a seat, relax, stay a while. I really wish that we could bottle that fragrance up and permeate it in this space every time we come to the table. Because isn't that precisely what we should be experiencing every time we come to God's table, an enveloping sense of God's warmth and welcome. You can almost hear the audible words, come on in, y'all, have a seat. Eat this bread. Drink this cup. Be reminded of my love for you. Allow your mind and your heart and even your belly to be filled up to here, as my six-year-old says. Filled up with my love. And then when you leave the table, go and live out of that perfect love. There's plenty here for you and for everyone else. So don't be afraid to share it with everyone you meet. Really. Just sit. Eat, drink. 
You see, there's no perfectly weighed out list of ingredients, meaning there's no determining who's worthy enough and who isn't. Neither, none of that's needed because we've got grace for that. There's no proofing of the dough necessary, meaning no external measures of success. Because we've got hope for that instead. We don't even have to wait for the loaves to rise. Meaning we don't have to be wait until we're perfect first. That's not necessary because we've got the love of God embodied in the person of Jesus. And we know he's the only one that's going to be doing any rising after all. It turns out this bread has love baked right in. Can't you smell it? Can't you taste it? Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. In the video earlier, you saw a number of um, statements and, and words about communion by members of both of our communities. And it really, for me, as, as a disciple of Christ, um, I love the variety that you get. Um, as disciples, we recognize that folks come with their own experiences and beliefs. Um, there's the old joke, if you get 10 disciples in a room, you'll get 10 opinions about something. And I think it's probably true about... Yeah, Baptists are like that too, for sure. And I love it in part because for disciples, the communion table is the center of our tradition in part because of that diversity of belief. And as we come to this table tonight and every Sunday, um, I'm reminded of, of the words of the table, which are, do this in remembrance of me. And I, you know, the word do is carrying a lot of weight in that sentence. It's not believe this in remembrance of me. It's do this in remembrance of me. And our table is, is not 
it's not the kind of thing that demands of us uh, a certain confession or else you can't come. It doesn't demand of us a payment. It doesn't demand of us a list of, of ideologies or statements of belief or whatever. It just says, do this. And to me, that is what is so important about this table is both the freedom it offers, but also the, the physical call. Come and gather around this table together. Do it. Don't just think about it. Do it. So for me, when I think about communion, that act of doing is so important. I remember back one of my earliest memories of, of being really an adult and owning communion as a practice that I really believed in was, was in college. And I was far away from home, and I got involved in a campus ministry that was Lutheran. Uh, and what I learned in four years of being in a Lutheran campus ministry is that I am indeed a disciple. Um, <laughs> but I really did appreciate my four years as, as being part of this Lutheran church. But being a campus ministry, it gathered folks who were, you know, there are like three or four different kinds of Lutheran in this country, um, and they, they're not all the same. And they were all in this community together. And there were disciples and Methodists and Baptists and Episcopalians and it was this mishmash that, that got together under the Lutheran umbrella for a few years. But I was in college and I had classmates who, lots of people go to college and they lose themselves. And that looks like a lot of things, but for a lot of people that looks like this deep despair of where do I belong and who do I belong to. And I have this vivid memory of being in college and sitting in church, and we practiced communion by intinction every Sunday, so everybody would walk down the aisles, and they would rip off the bread and dip the cup. And I remember seeing somebody, a friend of mine, walking up with just tears streaming down her face. And to this day, I don't know why, but I've always been struck by the image because it was this vivid reminder of this table being this... It's an action. You do it. And in doing it, you find yourself part of, of community or meaning or purpose or, or forgiveness or grace or something. And I just remember this young woman walking down to the table because I know that she was carrying a burden and that it probably she couldn't muster the words of even what she was feeling. She was a college student far from home. But on Sunday evening, which is when we did church at that ministry, she just had to do it. Just walk up, tear the bread, dip it in the cup. Nobody asked anything more of her, demanded any more proof of her faith or worthiness. It was just come and do this in remembrance of me. So communion, when we gather at this table, we are, we are partaking in an action that unites us, not because we share the same beliefs, because we don't, not because we have all the same opinions, because we don't, but we come to this table because Christ has invited us, wherever we are and whatever we are caring, to come and do this in remembrance. And so tonight we celebrate that meal, that call to action, to come and to be and to join in this community that stretches back thousands of years and that will stretch thousands of years in some form into the future. We come to this table and break the bread and drink the cup and participate in what Christ is doing. And so tonight, we welcome you to this table. We come, all are welcome.
Now my Lord is also yours, my people are your own. Embrace together in God's arms, I enfold you now in mine. When you do this, remember me. All your sorrow shall be mine, your joy shall be my joy. Indebted to God's love in Christ, we die and reign with him. When you do this, remember me. So let us renew our faith. tonight we invite our elder Norm Long to ask thanks for the bread and the cup. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we believe Maudie Thursday to be the day when Jesus celebrated his final Passover with his disciples. It was then that Jesus washed the feet of his disciples in an extraordinary display of humility. In turn, he commanded them to do the same for each other. We pray tonight, Father, that we learn from this example that it might rekindle our faith and our commitment to you. Help us to see that through Jesus' example, how to live our lives as your disciples on our journey to Easter and beyond. Strengthen our hands and our wills with love and service for others. Let the world know we are your his disciples, that we love one another as Jesus has loved each of us. We pause now, reflecting on these powerful events. May this sacred service be a renewing memory and meaningful experience for each of us as we now break the bread and drink the wine as a symbol of Jesus' divine love and sacrifice for each of us. For we pray and ask it all now in his name. Amen. On that night when he was gathered with his disciples, Jesus took bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Take and eat.
And in the same way, Jesus also took the cup, pouring it out, he gave thanks for it. And he said, this cup is the new covenant made in my blood. Drink this too in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Friends, take and drink all of it. Friends, as we now depart, remember that no matter who you are, no matter where you go, no matter how great your mistakes or regrets, you and I will always be invited in and held together by the living God. Again and again, we are forgiven. And again and again, we are held close. Go now in peace. Amen. Mm-hmm.